Recently, This Is America and the World traveled to the Sultanate of Oman. Oman, which has developed into a vibrant and progressive country in just the past 40 years, has attracted little attention from the Western media. Oman's neighbors include Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, and Yemen, and lies across the Persian Gulf from Iran and Pakistan. With the vision of His Majesty Sultan Qaboos Ben Said Al Said, Oman shows itself to be a country grounded in its traditions and culture, vital to the region, and quietly engaged in the complex workings of the modern world. Oman, a successful country, is a country of natural beauty, warm and welcoming people, and a foreign policy based on listening and friendship. You'd never guess that in the heart of the Persian Gulf region, you'd discover one of the most stunning performance venues in the world. The country of Oman is home to this jewel of architecture, design, and the arts. The Royal Opera House Musket, that's the capital city, is unlike anything you've ever seen or experienced. From its commanding exterior to the very smallest features inside, the vision of His Majesty Sultan Qaboos is very clear and truly unforgettable. This performing arts center for the Omani people is an astonishing story unto itself. Like the country, Oman's Royal Opera House is a wonderful example of modern life and the Arab culture in harmony. This is America is brought to you by the National Education Association, the nation's largest advocate for children and public education. The Republic of Kazakhstan in the heart of Eurasia, a rich history, a culture of hospitality, and a future of development and growth. The U.S.-China Education Trust and the F.Y. Chang Foundation. The League of Arab States, representing 350 million people in 22 member countries. The Rotondaro Family Trust. The Embassy Series, uniting people through musical diplomacy, presenting international artists in diplomatic settings. To learn about the short history of the Royal Opera House Musket, we spoke with Hamid Ghazali. He's the project director who oversaw the construction of the building. His love of the Opera House and his enthusiasm for its beauty and design underscore his very personal connection. He begins our conversation by offering a brief timeline from the initial vision of His Majesty the Sultan to the grand opening in 2011. A lot of elements reflect and echoes the uh, traditional designs that comes from the uh, from the from Oman, uh, from the Islamic culture, uh, Islamic architecture, uh, from historic uh, designs that were in the Mamluk eras and the Mongolian era, uh, and so forth. There's a lot of combination of works: the Mashrabiya design, the curve, uh, the, the carving design works, the stenciling work that is there on the on the design uh, element, on the panels, on the marble. We have uh, a continuity of design pattern that is uh, replicated in the floors, on the walls, in the ceiling. And this design is continuing everywhere. It's like a bloodline that flows in all the building. It's all tied up together as one, in, you know, one coherent design that that flows in the building. It's basically a timeless design, if I might say. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason why I'm saying that because we are uh, replicating some designs from the past with some of the contemporary design of the present, mm -hmm. which evolves also for something that would be something of the future. That's why we call it a timeless design. It's a combination of all. It is mainly as an opera, yeah. but it's a multi-purpose multi uh, venue. Uh, it, can, it can hold, of course, theater and operatic uh, uh, functions, uh, uh, shows, and it can hold uh, uh, concert shows. Uh, it, it is two in one because this auditorium that you, we are so we're sitting on the stage, this stage moves. It is a mobile stage. This is basically we are under right now. 
this is called the orchestra shell. It's a shell that is weighing 500 tons and it moves back and forth. How many seats for a, like a concert? How many seats for a play? Is it different? So maximum of configuration is 1100 mm -hmm. and minimum of 840. 840. Yeah. And uh, I, I noticed in back of me is this huge uh, organ. Organ, yeah. Now what happens, <laughs> where does that, does the, that, where does it go someplace or? <laughs> the orchestra shell itself is yeah. 500 ton. The organ is 50 tons and it is suspended with the shell. So when the whole thing moves, automated on rails, moves back all the way, uh, approximately 55 uh, feet all the way back. Oh, so that all goes back. The whole thing with a push of a button, everything moves at 1.5 meter per second. It goes all the way back. So what replaces it? When this goes out, the, the, the stage comes well, out. Oh, the stage is there? Yes, there's a stage here. Does it raise or is yes, it there? Oh, it's there. we have three lifts. Oh. We have three lifts uh, that are here. All of them uh, go up and down. They also, they can take certain seat wagons. We, we have, that's why it goes from 1100 to 850 or 840. Uh -huh. This 250 or 260 seats, they hide below the floor of the auditorium. If we were a member of the audience, we would uh, come in, buy our tickets, come into a concert or opera, ballet, whatever, and sit in one of the uh, seats. Now, we would see on the back of the chair in front of us a small uh, television screen or a small computer screen. This is state of the art. Tell, tell me. Tell me. Yeah, actually, this is uh, one of the items, one of the technological items that are considered uh, as a first done in, in, in the world. First in the world? Uh, first in the world, yeah. Tell this, me. Uh, this screen is basically uh, an interactive screen that is put behind each seat. So each audience member have the pleasure of utilizing this screen for his own purpose without being shared with anybody else. This screen can be used to read the subtitle as a translation of the venue. It could be used as an interactive medium to interact with what's happening on the stage. If there's any voting or anything of that sort to select who is best and so forth. If there's a show of that type, at, 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 a, at a press of a button, you get the result that who is favored and so forth. Uh, also, the facility of the screen is also to be able to book for future shows. Uh, you can read the, uh, the programs that are coming, the current program that is on hand, translation for uh, up to six languages. With the press of a button, you can get the translation either in a subtitle or otherwise with the, with a, with a, with a, uh, with a headphone, uh, which is plugged into the seat, and you can select the translation if there's a conference uh, in, in, the, in the theater. So you drive by, just going to your home or shopping or to the festival. What do you think when you look at it? What, 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 what's, in, what's in your mind? What, what are you thinking? Uh, we finished this building two years ago and every time I pass by, it's, it, it brings pleasure to my heart. It's a beautiful, I don't know if you've seen it at night? Have uh, you seen, yes, have yes, you seen yes, the yes. lighting effect on it? And yes. It's, it's, I think it's a beautiful thing. Uh, it's a wow factor to me. It still is. But you so, had to be so proud of it. Yes, it's for sure. I think every Oman is proud of this uh, milestone that we've achieved. His Highness Saeed Kemal bin Fahad Al Saeed is Assistant Secretary General for the Cabinet of the Deputy Prime Minister of the Council of Ministers and a member of the Board of Directors of the Royal Opera House Musket. We sat with His Highness in one of the beautiful boxes within the Opera House itself and talked about how he sees the Royal Opera House as a cultural hub for the performing arts in Oman and in the Gulf region and also as the center for preserving the musical culture of Oman. The Royal Opera House uh, has been introduced as a cultural hub. And uh, it's very important to know that we are not importing Western culture, but it's a gateway to introduce cultures from all over the world. And an opera house of this size, of this magnitude, is the first of its kind in the region. And um, these art forms, such as opera, ballet, uh, have, are very new art forms to the country. And uh, they have been, you know, have had huge receptions from the Omani publics and the people in the region. His Majesty's belief is that the people of Oman are the instrument and means for the development of the country. And it's through continuous investments in the people 
that you will create a sense of well-being with the citizens and also you will strengthen the pillar of uh, modern state. And uh, by creating this Royal Opera House, he has created a cultural hub. He has created um, a center of excellence, a center of dialogue in the arts. But most importantly, if we look at the statistics, in most societies around the world, youngsters between the age of 16 and 26 have never been to an, an arts institution, uh, have never been to an opera, have never been to a ballet. And I think His Majesty wants to ensure that the youth of this country gets exposed to this at an early stage, also to inspire them and inspire local Omani arts in, in the region. Uh -huh. So it's an educational effort, is it? It is a big educational effort, and we have plans uh, for education and outreach. And we are at the moment developing strategies, how to reach to the schools, how to reach to the children, how to introduce art to them, how to make it interesting, how to match it to what they're demanding. You know, a lot of the world is going towards movies and cinemas and TVs, and we're trying to bring back the culture. Uh, because at the end of the day, when you come to an institution like this, it's not just watching an opera show, it's not just enjoying a ballet. You also get to know about the country, you get to know about the company, you get to know about the history, about the, the producer, why has this been produced, what is the story behind it. So every show, every performance we attend is an education. What seems to have resonated with the people? What, what seems to be the most popular? Opera. Opera. Opera, opera has... Why do you think? Why do you think? That's an interesting question. I think the, the beauty about opera is it's a musical, but at the same time done on the highest level with the most prestigious artists, with the most renowned voices. Uh, I think the stories behind them. A lot of people have been exposed to maybe the stories during their school years or during their travels abroad, and now it's brought to them here, you know, five minutes away from their house. So I think everyone connected to that. So opera has had a huge audience, sold out tickets, and uh, I think in second place would be ballet. Ballet is very, very popular. So would you say the Omani people are, uh, are, are very musical? Absolutely. We have long, long history of folklore, long history of dance in the country. And this is a very interesting question you brought up because this is something as an opera house we're trying to preserve. We're trying to preserve the, the Omani dances, the traditional dances, the folklore, because right now this is passed down from generation to generation by word of mouth. And we are trying to document it as an opera house and really make sure that all these things, you know, stay in archives and are properly videotaped and are properly described and documented for our future generations to see. When our conversation is over and you say to yourself, Oh, I wish I would have said that. <laughs> what do you wish that you would have said that I haven't asked you as a question? I think I would have wished you asked me what am I most proud about. Yes. And um, I'm proud of many, many things when it comes to the Opera House. First of all, I'm proud how the, the vision of His Majesty came at a time where no one thought of establishing an Opera House, so no one saw the use of an Opera House you know, in the region. And his Majesty's vision, you know, went 10 years ahead to today and saw the benefits it'll offer. I'm proud about how uh, it's so important, and I, I, I stress this, that we have so much folklore and art in Oman, but it's not being documented. It's being passed down by word of mouth through families, and I'm proud that the Opera House is going to have a major role in documenting these roles, as well as with the help of other institutions, and in really making sure that this stays for our future generations. I'm proud about how in the future we plan to develop uh, Omani art and you know, progress it forward. And uh, I'm, I'm also proud how um, in, a very, in, in our uh, opening, as our opening season, you know, we had the production of Toronto, which was done 100% by the Royal Opera House. To have a production at the scale of Toronto and with the success it got us, in the time frame we had, I, it's very difficult to describe the, the amount of uh, pressure and the amount of work we had to do, not only to bring Toronto, but to bring uh, an extremely beautiful and powerful opening season, and we have done just that. And I hope we continue to continue on the same level with the same quality of shows and same high standards, so that we always meet the demands and the needs of the people, locally, regionally, and internationally. It's hard to believe that just in the first year and a half, the Royal Opera House has already presented such artists as Placido Domingo, 
Renee Fleming and Joshua Bell and offered productions of Don Quixote, Carmen, and Swan Lake. Her Excellency, Dr. Rauya al Busaidi, is Oman's Minister of Higher Education and Chair of the Board of Directors for the Royal Opera House Musket. We spoke with the minister about the variety of successful performances already hosted by the Royal Opera House Musket and some of the challenges the Opera House will face in the future. The Opera House. What is an Opera House doing in Oman? Uh, this opera house is a crowning achievement of a long um, cultural development plan which started in the early 70s, uh, in the early days of the Renaissance. And uh, 42 years later, we are very proud to have such a cultural icon established here in Oman. Um, it has done a lot, I think, for uh, supporting and consolidating uh, Omani traditional arts and will continue to do so uh, in the coming days and also um, help in the interaction of uh, these Omani arts with uh, international culture. His Majesty the Sultan is very committed to the arts, obviously, huh? He is. And this is his gift to um, the Omani people, especially to youth. It's a forum where uh, Omani talent can be showcased. Mm -hmm. What's the biggest challenge you've faced? I think uh, audience, uh, building an audience and uh, retaining it, but further than that, expanding uh, the audience. Um, we don't just want to attract people from the capital, but uh, from uh, the interior and other regions of Oman. We want to attract people from different age groups. Um, we want to uh, attract people from uh, our neighboring countries and uh, also the expatriates living here. And uh, I think uh, we've done well, but uh, the other challenge, of course, is to maintain the high standards, to keep the high standards achieved in the launch season, which was, uh, it had a stellar array of uh, the best operas, the best musicians, the best ballet companies, and therefore it is quite a challenge keeping up those uh, high standards. Have you got a sense so far in this uh, year and a half of what the Omani people seem to like more than anything. I think operas uh, c come first. They're all, always uh, full houses and sold out uh, shows. And then ballet, and then various um, Arabic and Omani uh, shows. And then we come to jazz and modern dance, I think. We've also explored bringing uh, to the Royal Opera House musicals. We've had one uh, American musical, The Music Man, uh, which was well attended, and we had a matinee performance for it uh, so that the whole family can come. But we're looking at uh, trying to bring uh, um, uh, more um, popular musicals uh, in the near future, too. Uh, the uh, National Symphony Orchestra, headquartered in our town of Washington, D.C., was just here. How, how was that? That's a big, uh, that's a great number of people, huh? Yes. Coming, the symphony, yes. probably about a hundred or more. Mm -hmm. How was that received? I think it was a great success. Uh, as I said, uh, concerts are very popular here because it's a well-known form of uh, music. Uh, the Royal Symphony Orchestra was established uh, several years back, around 25 years back and therefore um, the Omani audience is familiar with the orchestral uh, symphony orchestras and uh, it was well attended too.
After studying at the University of Washington in Seattle and at UCLA, Dr. Nasser al Tayi was on faculty at the University of Tennessee. He's the chief musicologist at the Royal Opera House Muscat, an advisor to the Board of Directors for Education and Outreach. His mission, to teach the Omani people about the music of the world and to preserve Oman's historic and rich musical culture. The Opera House is, uh, is an amazing achievement uh, for Oman and, as I say, for the world. Uh, it's, uh, it's our gift to humanity. It's our contribution to this global dialogue of culture, between cultures, that in Oman it's a central uh, um, uh, policy for us to build and cement these kind of bridges. And we look at this monument as a, an amazing uh, jewel of, uh, from the architectural point of view, from the artistic, and also from setting on social policies. And we are so proud of, uh, uh, of this as an institution, uh, despite uh, it's only been a year, a year and a half old, we have managed to uh, carve a special uh, place in history in terms of uh, bringing to Oman um, the most celebrated and the most excellent uh, part of performances from a variety of cultures. What role will the Opera House play as far as uh, educating the Omani people about the arts, the performing arts? Well, this is our challenge, is to, uh, to uh, introduce a new, cult a new cultural values to a, to a place that has strong cultural values of, of their own. But now we are integrating many cultures and many traditions. And the challenge is to convey the beauty of, of these various musical genres and traditions to Oman. And we do this through lectures. We are so keen on um, presenting lectures before some important shows to explain their history and to explain how to listen uh, to these works. We do tours uh, for the public for free. Um, we, uh, we, are, uh, we go to schools. Uh, we bring students. We have family nights at the Opera House where we bring not just uh, special shows for children, but free performances for students so that our new generation can grow up with traditions and values uh, that we all love and inspire uh, to see in our children. We are cherishing the possibility of seeing performances like Puccini's Turandot, Verdi's Rigoletto, having the uh, possibility to have Yo-Yo Ma, Rene Fleming, Marsalis, and uh, Joshua Bell, and so on and so on perform in Oman. I used to be a student uh, trying to buy a, a student tickets at the Met, standing uh, very far in the very back of the, of the auditorium. Here we have these magnificent works being presented in Oman for our audiences. So it's a wonderful gift and it's something that we are so proud of. Um, one of the things I want to also highlight is how there were some amazing moments within these performances where, where the people were just in awe uh, of, of the performance. Uh, and you could see our hall during these performances, the diversity of audience, Omanis, uh, expats, Western workers, who all come in together and share one magnificent artistic uh, celebration. So it's a wonderful place to bring people together. But there are also moments in, when music really takes center stage. And once the lights are dimmed, the music speaks to us personally. It does not know borders and it does not recognize racial differences. It can just affect us in the same way and move us and bring us together. Those are the moments that we cherish and we really are proud that there is a place now here in Muscat where these events are possible. Special thanks to the Embassy of the Sultanate of Oman in Washington. And in Oman, the Ministry of Information, the Public Authority for Radio and Television, Muscat Municipality, 
And extra special thanks to the Intercontinental Hotel in Muscat, Oman. For information about my new book, The Chance of a Lifetime, and online video for all This Is America programs, visit our website, thisisamerica.net. And now you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter. This Is America is brought to you by the National Education Association the nation's largest advocate for children and public education. The Republic of Kazakhstan in the heart of Eurasia, a rich history, a culture of hospitality, and a future of development and growth. The U.S.-China Education Trust and the F.Y. Chang Foundation. The League of Arab States, representing 350 million people in 22 member countries. The Rotondaro Family Trust. The Embassy Series, uniting people through musical diplomacy, presenting international artists in diplomatic settings. <laughs>